Welcome to my WWE Payback recap and rehashes video. I just finished watching the, uh, the pay-per-view uh, live on stream. I'm gonna, I have all the matches listed in order, everything that happened in uh, the pre-show, everything that happened that took place on the pre-show in the match car, all the official match cars in the main event, which I disagree with. I don't think it should have been a main event because all the other matches were way better, but it ended up in a shocking way that I didn't really see coming. So uh, I was really expecting some a particular superstar to win uh, as usual, as predicted, but um, it, it ended up turning around in a different way. So I'm going to get into that later in the video. But uh, I'm going to get started. The pre-show, the only match for this show, for the pay-per-view, was the pre-show. The only match, official match for the pre-show, was Enzo and Cass taking on Luke Gallows and uh, Carl Anderson um, in a tag team action. And uh, Enzo and, and Big Cass ended up getting the win here. And... Uh, to be honest, I like these guys. I think these are these these guys are really entertaining. I love when they get in the ring and uh, their might their their promos are really entertaining, especially Enzo. But uh, it, it'll be cool if they get the tag team titles. I would love to see them one day win the tag team titles. And uh, they're one of the most entertaining tag teams alongside of the New Day, in my honest opinion. So I don't know what they're probably gonna do with them. Are they gonna ever get a uh, another tag uh, a tag team title shot I don't know what's gonna possibly happen with these guys but I think they're good enough and it'll be really cool to just have even if it's not a long title run it'll be sweet to have them to actually give them a tag team title uh, reign but that was the only match on the preview on the pre-show for this pay-per-view and after this was the the Miz TV featuring Finn, Finn Balor um, this segment here um, where Finn Balor really, uh, he announces that he's going to go after his universal title again. He's going to try to, I guess he's going to try to probably challenge Brock Lesnar for the title now. But I'm not sure when he's probably going to get his title match. Maybe after possibly the next pay-per-view. Is Brock Lesnar going to show up tomorrow on Raw uh, to address Finn Balor's uh, you know, his reaction and the fact that he never lost his title. And Finn Balor just actually came back fresh off of WrestleMania right immediately after. The Raw after Mania, I like to say. And he never ended up losing his title because he beat Seth Rollins, but he ended up sustaining an injury during the match. And still wrestling and competing throughout the match to still get the victory over Seth Rollins. But um, I don't know when is he going to get his title match. If, he, if he's going to probably be in a title picture. Are they going to throw anybody else, any other superstars off of Raw to compete in a match to make it into like a maybe a triple threat or a fable four-way i don't know what's going to happen but i don't know how he's going to beat brock lesnar since brock lesnar's probably going to suplex him like crazy but i really like Finn Balor, and he definitely needs to get his title back gets back get back into the title picture um for sure because he, he never ended up losing it so I mean, i'm curious to see what they're going to do with him and, and maybe brock lesnar will probably show it tomorrow i don't know uh, i don't know what's probably going to happen or maybe they're gonna give him a, a few with the the Miz after what he did on the uh, on payback. It's just just revenge or something. I don't know. Uh, the next uh, the, uh, after that the pre-show segment was over. So here's all the matches from the official match card for the pay-per-view. The first match was Kevin Owens taking on Chris Jericho for United States champion uh, United States Championship, and the winner will be going to SmackDown because AJ Styles is the number one contender for the United States Championship. Chris Jericho surprisingly ended up winning this match. I thought Kevin Owens was going to win this easy, easily uh, and end up taking on AJ Styles at uh, Backlash for the, uh, the championship. Now, it, I, I didn't really care who won this match because Kevin Owens and, Chris, and AJ Styles, that's going to that automatically just... Just when you think of that, that's going to already be a, automatically a really good classic, a potential classic match. And then Chris Jericho already ended up fighting and, and facing AJ Styles at WrestleMania in the past. And that was one of the best matches at WrestleMania. And uh, really well uh, performed, well done by both uh, wrestlers and competitors. So Chris Jericho ended up getting his title back. Um, so now he's the, not only the United States champion, since he was already on Raw, now he's going to be a part of, officially a part of the SmackDown roster, and now he's going to be end up facing AJ Styles at a later date for the United States Championship. 
The next match was Austin Aries taking on Neville for the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, I thought this match should have been went uh, should have went a little bit longer. I thought it was going to be uh, just as good, but I didn't really like how this one really ended. Neville ended up getting himself disqualified by grabbing the ref when uh, Austin Aries had his submission finisher in. I forgot the name of it. I think is it called the Last Chance? I I, I could be wrong, but uh, he had it in him, and he ended up grabbing Neville ended up grabbing the referee, and the referee ended up call ends up calling the bell to DQ disqualify Neville. So Neville ended up retaining the, his championship. Uh, next, we had the Hardys, the Hardy Boys, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. I'm glad those guys are back. Taking on Sheamus and Cesaro. A pretty good match for the tag team, Raw tag team titles. Uh, as I already knew, the Hardys ended up retaining because they just got the championships uh, not too long ago. But uh, at, immediately, a little bit after the match, and, uh, you know, being good sports, being good sports to Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, um, right when they're vulnerable and have their bats turned, Sheamus and Cesaro ended up attacking Jeff and Matt from behind. So I guess they're heels now, going heel, and they're, you know, they're upset that they lost the match and all that stuff. So I'm sure they're gonna probably get back at them on the show tomorrow. Next, we had the Alexa Alexa Bliss taking on Bailey for the Raw Raw Women's Championship. Uh, I thought Bailey was gonna retain. And, uh, and since she was in her hometown, but as as usual, the hometown heroes don't is is not always uh, a guarantee that the hometown heroes um, that defend their championships will always come out victorious. So we have a new Raw Women's Championship. Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss ended up winning, and uh, I don't I I love the women's division. They're really talented and, and good competitors on both Raw and SmackDown. So now Alexa Bliss is officially the first superstar uh, women's competitor to hold both the SmackDown uh, Championship and the Raw Championship. So well deserved and uh, I'm curious to see what's going to happen and transpire. I mean, she's going to most likely get a rematch clause. I like ba I, ba I, I like Bailey. I don't know why she gets so much hate, but I don't know. I guess because people book, they're, they're booking her wrong and uh, I don't know. I personally like her. I haven't. I never watched her in NXT because most people say, "Oh, she's she was really good in NXT," but now she seems a lot different now that she's on part of. Now she's part of Raw, and maybe like she's missing some moves. I don't know what she could do in NXT because I never watched her and knew anything about Bailey until I seen her appear on Raw officially. So we have Alexa Bliss winning the match um, for the new as the new champion. Now this 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 was my one of my favorite match, parts of the show. Randy Orton taking on Bray Wyatt in a House of Horrors match. It, it was it was it, it, this was really cool though. I liked how it started out. But uh, the thing with this, then of course Orton and Bray ended up fighting in the House of Horrors on you know Bray Wyatt's turf and stuff like that. But uh, it wasn't really the official match. It took place. It, it was just a, 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 a little bit of a match segment, and then after that. Um, Bray Wyatt ended up moving and making his way to the ring, but after that, they ended up moving on to the next match because um, he threw a refrigerator on Randy Orton, on top of Randy Orton, which is crazy. So the next match, uh, right after the little Hawks of Horrors brawl, was uh, Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe, uh, a match I really wanted to see. And then the match between Bray Wyatt and Orton took place inside the ring later on, immediately after the Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe match. But uh, speaking of that match, Seth Rollins ended up getting the victory over Joe. Um, I think he actually froze, so I don't even, I don't even know how he got the win uh, over uh, Joe. Because all I could, all I could hear as soon as the stream came back on, I just heard Seth Rollins' music uh, playing. So I would assume that he probably found a way to sneak a victory over Joe, maybe like a roll up pin or something like that. Who knows? But uh, just like I mentioned, after the Seth Rollins and Joe. Samoa Joe match, the the continuation of Orton versus Bray Wyatt um, continued. And uh, inside the ring, Randy Orton ended up sneaking behind Bray Wyatt and uh, you know getting the jump on him and uh, hitting him with chairs. This is now a no holds barred match. You can, anything is basically allowed in the in the match. But guess who got involved? The number one contender for Orton's champion, Jinder Mahal. Orton's uh, championship, I mean. Jinder Mahal ends up getting involved in the match, so um, costing 
Brandy the match. I thought this was going to gonna be a championship match when, once Bray Wyatt ended up getting the victory. And I was like, wait, did he lose the title? But I was like, why would he lose the title when Bray Wyatt's on Raw? You can't have two championships, two heavyweight championships on WWE championships on the same, on one show. Not like it used to be back in the day. So that was the end of the match. Bray Wyatt ended up uh, getting redemption thanks to uh, Jinder Mahal interfering in, in, to, in the match. And it's his lackeys. I don't know who those guys are <laughs> getting involved. Now the main event, Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt. Why well, I say Bray Wyatt? Braun Strowman in a uh, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Roman Reigns was apparently not 100% from the, his, the injuries he sustained from Braun Strowman destroying him on Monday Night Raw, which I never saw coming. That was pretty crazy. Uh, Braun Strowman ended up getting the win. I thought Roman Reigns was going to really have this one in the back because every time he's in a match, it's almost like we can predict that he's going to win every match that he's in. Now that he beat Undertaker, Undertaker's retired now, and... Uh, I just really thought he was gonna beat Braun Strowman for sure, so I'm glad it's, it's I'm glad that Braun Strowman ended up winning. I think he deserved to win, and um, he definitely has gotten a lot better in the ring. He's 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 really athletic to me, it, as a a huge guy, you know, like almost the size of Big Show. But uh, I'm I'm glad that to see that Braun Strowman actually got the win here. So uh, immediately after the match, uh, Braun Strowman ended up beating down Roman Reigns to a pulp where blood was coming out of his mouth. So blood is back on the uh, program. I I don't know, but uh, that's just that's how the the pay per view ended up ending after Braun Strowman just ended up destroying Roman Reigns. So I guess Roman Reigns is going to be back on the show uh, for some time. So I can't really see him in the title match. So I don't know what they're going to do with him now, and uh, it just makes me think of. Finn Balor, so I don't know. Maybe Braun Strowman's gonna come after him. But but speaking of Finn Balor, they also had like a few you know starting up some a little thing starting up between Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt. So maybe that could be a, the next thing for the show. I mean, I would really like to see that Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt until Brock Lesnar comes back with the title. I don't know when he's gonna show up because he 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 doesn't he's not on the show as often as all the other superstars. You know, and he's supposed to be the champion. But um, I don't know what they're going to do. We're just going to have to see what they do uh, going forward for the show tomorrow. And uh, uh, now that Chris Jericho is going to be part of SmackDown, I know he's going to be facing AJ Styles. And who knows what other matches are going to be set and scheduled for uh, SmackDown's upcoming pay-per-view backlash later on in May. So I don't know what you guys thought about the pay-per-view. I, I, I still enjoyed it, but... Uh, my top favorite moment for sure for the matches, I would just say that House of Horrors might match that House of Horrors part where Orton and Bray Wyatt was fighting for that uh, that little part of the show. And then all the other matches were pretty good and, you know, decent. But the, the main event, that wasn't supposed to be a main event. It should have been something else. It should have been like one of the championship matches. Maybe the, the Orton and Bray Wyatt. But, um... I don't know. Some people probably didn't, or maybe didn't like it too much. Who knows? Some people had different preferences about the matches, but those were all the matches. And I honestly think it's cool to see we got some new champions and Alexa Bliss taking the Raw Women's Champion Championship, and then some other and you know, Chris Jericho going to SmackDown unexpectedly. So I don't know. I just don't know what what they're gonna do next, and uh, what are they gonna really have Finn Balor get in the title picture, or are they gonna just give him a a meaningless feud against the me the Miz or something like that? I don't know what they're gonna do. Dean Ambrose didn't even have a match. That's something else I want to mention too. Dean Ambrose is on Raw. He didn't even have a match. He didn't have to defend his Intercontinental Championship every other. And Dean Ambrose is not even on SmackDown. But I don't know who's gonna who's gonna challenge. And, Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship after he dropped Miz two times already, back-to-back -back Rawls. But it's just so many questions. I don't know what they're going to do next. But uh, those are my reactions. That's all the matches for the recap. And uh, let me know what you guys thought about the pay-per-view, if you guys watched it, and if you guys enjoyed it, and some of your favorite matches as well.